and welcome to our webinar, Be Happy Ideas and Strategies to Create a Mindful Workplace. And what we're going to do in today's session is we're going to look at an introduction to mindfulness, um, some attitudes of mindfulness and the workplace and mindfulness and learning a language. And before we begin, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Donatella Fitzgerald and I work for Pearson in Italy as the English language learning sales manager. I'm also the, um, one of the Pearson Global Mindfulness Mentors. I started out my career after university working in a bank um, and then um, qualified as a teacher and uh, um, have worked in um, um, English language learning for many, many years. So uh, that's me. And as I said, I'm originally from London. So let's begin now and welcome us all in here uh, with a hugging breath. And this is something that you can do um, wherever you are. You can do um, in your workplace, um, you can do at home. Every so often we all need a, a hug and it's good to give ourselves a hug. So when you breathe out, if you can open your arms like this, if you can all do this at home and breathe out and then breathe in and give yourselves a hug like this and then breathe out and then breathe in and give yourself a really tight hug and we're going to do that another time. Breathe out and um, give yourself a really um, tight hug and I can see lots and lots of hearts okay so how do you feel now can you all just write an adjective in the um, chat box relaxed Gita so, hi Vanessa that's a photo of Vanessa as well lovely calm happy louder lovely and in fact I can see lots of smiles um, all over the world so there you go, go. that's absolutely um, lovely and um, relaxed OK, so oh, we've got Dragna from Montenegro. That's lovely. And Juliana from Brazil. Fantastic. And you're all feeling happy. So that's great. OK, so what is mindfulness? Well, mindfulness is the awareness of paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment and non-judgmentally. And that's the definition by John Kabat-Zinn. And what mindfulness isn't, it's always useful to look at that. It's actually not a relaxation method, although it's one of the benefits you get from practicing mindfulness. It's not about emptying the mind, but more about an awareness. It's not about a st achieving a state of bliss or a quick fix it sticking plaster. And it's not a replacement for counselling or therapy if that's what is required. So it's really um, about the awareness and paying attention. And that's really important. So a uh, question for all of you at home or at work, wherever you are now watching this um, webinar. How in the present moment are you? OK, and for this, it's quite simple. We're going to have a yes or a no, a Y or an N in the chat. So the first question. I break or spill things because of carelessness, not paying attention or thinking of something else so you break or you spill or you drop things anyone do that do you do that no we've got quite a lot of no's okay so we're all very careful about that very good okay i forget a person's name as soon as i have been told it oh we've got a few yeses there there you go okay <laughs> We've got a, that's a mixed one. So yeah, a few more yeses coming in there from around the world. So that's good. I tend to walk quickly to get where I'm going without paying attention to what I experience on the way. Oh yeah, definitely a lot more yeses coming in there. So um, that's, uh, that's great. A lot more yeses there. I find it difficult to stay focused on what's happening in the present. Yeah, a really mix there, a mix there. OK, and how about this one? I find myself listening to someone with one ear and doing something else at the same time. So 
Uh, yeah, that's 100% yeses nearly, um, or almost 99% yeses. So absolutely. Um, so if you said yes to any of those, mindfulness can help because it's um, about really um, being in the moment. So what makes up mindfulness? So uh, when we talk about mindfulness, we um, have three main areas. We have the psychological principles um, where we um, explain the underlying psychology, the neuroscience between behind how the brain works and the impact that regular mindfulness practice can have on the brain. We look at um, formal practices as well. So we learn more formal practices like one we will do um, together in a moment. And then we look at everyday mindfulness. So daily mindfulness, for example, carefully preparing a cup of tea, um, being very aware when you're brushing your teeth or going for a walk or with what is happening in the present moment, even mindful listening in your workplace. And when we do all of these things together, we achieve better self-awareness and self-management. And that, as a consequence, creates a happier, calmer, focused individual awareness and self-management. So basically that's how it works. And um, we can look at mindfulness as well um, in the um, context of the Agenda 2030 and goal number three, good health and well-being. But remember that your well-being is fundamental. You first. You can't pour for an, from an empty cup and it's the oxygen mask um, approach on the airline first yourself and then you help other people so this is really um, really important okay fantastic uh, hi Manoni you've just come in from Georgia lovely to see you so let's have a mindful moment oops and this is uh, a practice um, it's a very short practice, so it's pocket um, called stop. And at any time during the day, you can do this when you need it or you're required to be particularly focused. Um, so if you find you have a moment in the day when you feel scattered and overwhelmed, rushing from place to place and contemplating, for example, your to do list, um, or writing a to-do list and then another to-do list within the to-do list that never seems to get any shorter. Try this stop practice. And it really is stop. Yes, literally stop. So standing or sitting as best for you and deliberately being still. If you're sitting or you're standing, planting your feet on the ground. Stopping yourself from rushing to the next thing, reaching for your phone or walking immediately out of the door. Perhaps lowering your gaze or closing your eyes or keeping your eyes open. You choose whatever works best for you. And now taking a breath. Taking five good deep breaths and feeling the breath all the way in and all the way out. You may notice the impulse to hurry this and you can slow it down as best you can. And now observing what's going on right now how your body's feeling, any tightness or tension, any calm or ease or nothing at all, and any thoughts that may be tugging for your attention. And as best you can, and as you breathe, Allow yourself to simply name and note what you're noticing. So tension is here. My to-do list is here. Worry is here. Cold is here. Warm is here. And this 
naming will allow us to create a little space in our lives so these emotions and thoughts can slightly reduce their hold on us. And now opening your eyes, looking at the screen in front of you, having taken this moment, this micro moment of pause, being attentive whilst allowing ourselves to become more grounded and settled, we're now able to go into the next moment to proceed with a little more clarity and compassion for ourselves and acknowledging yourself for taking the time to come to this webinar today and for having had that pause and proceeding with your day and proceeding with the webinar. And the pause, um, this stop, we can do this any time during the day, before a meeting, before a, a conference, before a speech, before any moment where we need to stop, recenter, and then proceed. So um, now after we've done something like that, again, you can ask us, you can be attentive and we can inquire. So can you just write a little adjective in the chat about how you feel now? Relaxed and centred, Barbara. OK, so you feel absolutely uh, relaxed, relaxed and focused. Everyone's feeling calm. Good. OK, centred. Yeah, absolutely. So that's great. So uh, very good, Victor. Oh, fantastic. So how can we be more mindful at work? Well, um, so John Kabat-Zinn, in his book, uh, Full Catast Catastrophe Living, says this, which is very important, weave your parachute. Make sure you weave your parachute every day rather than leaving it to the time you have to jump out of the plane. So again, be prepared and practice. And, um, you know, so that is um, an important message. And how can we do this? So we can do this with regular mindfulness practice. Um, it's like going to the gym and training. You don't run that marathon straight away you don't pick up those 200 kilos straight away you do bit by bit and you need to exercise the brain regularly to keep it strong and working at its best so how can we um, begin to integrate um, mindfulness attitudes um, into um, our daily lives and our workplace well, one of the ways is looking at the nine attitudes um, cultivated through mindfulness that John Kabat-Zinn has described. And these are the following. They're non-judgment, acceptance, patience, gratitude, beginner's mind, trust, non-striving, letting go and generosity. And we'll look at these um, today um, with, a, with a mind to looking at Work, the workplace and how um, these can affect us. And so let's look at non-judging. So what does that mean exactly? Well, that can mean a non-judging attitude of situations and of yourself as well. Um, so, you know, being kind on yourself and not um, always judging and being harsh. And um, as we saw in the seminar yesterday, also it can mean open-mindedness. And that's really important. So though that's important there with non-judging. Then we've got acceptance. So what could acceptance mean in the workplace? It could be um, accepting colleagues without reactivity, um, approaching others positively and yourself again. Remember, it's all about yourself and also being in the present moment. Again, accepting the situation and being in the present moment. Um, we can also look at patience, so active and attentive listening for problem solving, flexibility and adaptability and tolerance. These are all qualities um, that can promote a healthy and happy web, um, workplace and also beginner's mind. So nurturing curiosity and seeing things with new eyes. Just think about um, one of your situations and how if you see it with new eyes, what that means exactly. And growth mindset as well. And we're going to look at that in a moment. So some of the other qualities as well and the attitudes are trust. So and this came up yesterday as well. So self-belief and confidence, striving for that growth mindset. 
non-striving as well. So curiosity, job satisfaction and fear of missing out. That's really important as well. We always want to be everywhere. So um, and especially with pressures now on social media. So that can be um, an important thing to bear in mind and also self-compassion as well. And then we talk about letting go. So this is really important. Letting go of bias, um, for example, really important. And also decreased rumin rumination. So not chewing over things and, you know, just really letting go. And also generosity. Again, um, this came up yesterday. So helping colleagues, inclusion, mentoring, and also giving him recognition where it's due. This is so important. And these um, are really, really um, important um, attitudes. Um, so out of those, there is another attitude as well, and we're going to look at it in a minute, and it's gratitude. But out of those attitudes, um, which do you find uh, more challenging work. So think about your work situation um, and which of these attitudes, it might be more than one, do you find more challenging? Letting go, Paula. Absolutely. That's good. It's interesting. Gratitude, <laughs> Marina, non judgment. There's a real mix, of, isn't there? That's great, isn't it? Um, non striving. Yeah. So um, what's wonderful about this is that um, these are all things and it's that awareness. This is really good noticing as well. You're all noticing these things. So this is fantastic. So it's really good to um, begin to um, think about these and how we can address these issues. So th this is absolutely wonderful. Look at that noticing there. So let's look at gratitude as well and how we can make it a keystone habit, because gratitude really needs to um, be practiced. It's not something that we're sort of born with. So gratitude is noticing and bringing an attitude of thankfulness um, to the many aspects of our lives that are going well. Um, so we can look at appreciation. Um, and by doing that, we move out of automatic pilot. We um, try and be more aware for about noticing what we're thankful for, um, savouring those pleasant situations or emotions. Um, and in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. And that's really important. Um, and we can uh, do this by focusing on those small positives, um, remembering that gratitude is linked to happiness. Um, so savouring those moments of happiness in your life, thinking about how they've made you feel and um, and just, you know, really, really homing in on that. Um, and gratitude can help us feel more positive, um, relish good experience. And it can, you know, in the long run, improve all areas of life and build strong relationships. So that's um, something that is really important. And there is um, a, a practice, again, a pocket practice that you can take away today um, that you can introduce into your um, life. And um, to do this, I need you to um, hold up your hand. It's a three finger gratitude practice. And you can close your eyes or lower your gaze and hold your thumb and just feel the skin on your thumb there, holding your thumb. and think of a person that you're grateful for. So a person in your life or a person at work that you're grateful for. And now move and hold your index finger and think of a place you're grateful for. You may call it your happy place. And thinking about work as well, a place at work or something related to your, a place related to your work that you're grateful for. And then your middle finger, hold your middle finger, feel the skin touching your hand. And think of something that helps you do your job that you're grateful for.
and now opening your eyes and coming back and just perhaps you might want to it'd be lovely to to um to see some of the things in the chat that you're grateful for. So thinking about work, is there something, is there a place at work you're grateful for or a person you're grateful for? Or, um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Vanessa, that's nice. See what people say, the family, that's lovely, good. What about, um, did anyone, think of a thing that they're grateful for. I'm grateful for my mobile phone. I'm grateful for Zoom as well. Your mum, Elkin, that's lovely. Parents, yeah. Oh, isn't that lovely? Internet, Victor, absolutely. Yeah, it's that gratitude, isn't it? Things that we take um, for granted, yeah. Has anyone else, what about um, uh, Patrizia, your husband, that's nice. Has anyone, did anyone put a place down? Your team at work, Laura, isn't that lovely? You and your webinar, Paula, that's nice. Oh, um, did anyone, your colleagues, did anyone think of a place, your garden? Oh, Vanessa, your garden, Villa Pamphili. Oh, that's lovely. It's a beautiful park in Rome, your house. Great, and you can repeat this every day. Um, encourage people around you to, to do this as well. You can do it um, uh, either in the morning when you get up or before you go to bed at night or even during the day when you're, you've got a moment. Again, it's that sort of really bringing into mind things that you're grateful for. And you could actually do it with more fingers. I just um, did three today, but um, again, you know, so um, it's great. Your house, that's nice, yeah. So what skills can mindfulness give us? Now, I'll ask uh, my colleague, Laura, who I'm very grateful for today. She's going to help me with the chat. And um, you can uh, access the Pocket Guide to Mindfulness by Amy Malloy, um, published by Pearson. It's free. You can download it. And um, there, um, it's a lovely little guide that gives um, some um, hints on how to um, integrate mindfulness um, into um, your day. And um, it, in the book, um, she talks about what skills mindfulness can give us. And we're looking at paying attention, awareness, focus and concentration, curiosity as well, um, observation without judgment, acceptance and self-compassion, achieving our goals, uh, performance and productivity if we're more focused. Um, also, um, it can help us that awareness of actually finding time and managing our busy lives and there's a lovely quote in um in the pocket guide by um steve jobs here if you just sit and observe you will see how restless your mind is and we saw that with the um stop if only you try and calm it it only makes it worse but over time it does calm and when it does there's room to hear more subtle things and that's when your intuition starts to blossom and you start to see things more clearly and be more in the present more. So there's advocacy there for being in the present moment. And that's really important. So there you go. Um, and if you've got um, uh, your nephew, La Rita, isn't that lovely? And if you've got any problems finding that guide, just contact your Pearson representative. Take a photo, perhaps of this screen. Um, you will get the um, recording after. But if you take a photo and then um, your Pearson representative can track it down for you. OK, so um, one of the things, so how can we be in the present? OK, the past is over. The future hasn't come yet. But how can we actually get ourselves into the present moment? And um, we, you've got this wonderful image by Vanessa Walker here of the anchor um, there on the ship, sort of grounding you um, just into um, the present. And as Abraham Maslow says, the ability to focus on the present moment is a major component of mental wellness. So that is really living the moment now and um, enjoying and savouring every minute of it. And um, as Amy Malloy says in the Pocket Guide, by anchoring ourselves in the present moment, we become more aware, aware of our thoughts and what our feelings are doing. And we saw that in the stop practice. So we can choose how to respond consciously and skillfully to the situations. And that's the key, really. It's that awareness of then um, being able to um, see how to respond and to respond wisely. 
So we've looked at gratitude as well. And an important um, aspect as well is to make positivity a, great, um, a keystone habit. habit. Now, um, human beings um, are programmed, if you like, um, to look for bad news. So the alarm bell of your brain, the amygdala, uses about two thirds of its neurons to look for bad news. And it's just primed to go negative. And this is what we call the negativity bias, and it's part of human evolution. Prehistoric man, if he saw a, a black, long thing in the ground, wouldn't go near it, perhaps because it could be a stick or it could be a snake. So it was, that's the negativity um, bias there, an illustration of it. However, we have the chance to change this by appreciating and lingering on tiny positive moments every day. Now, you've probably had this as well at work. If you're given feedback and you're given 99% really fantastic feedback and then there's one comment, you know, that might be fairly critical, it's that one little 1% you will always remember, not the 99%, and that's the negativity bias. So what we really need to do is um, to appreciate and linger on tiny positive moments every day. Uh, and um, you can, there's more on this um, in a Pearson Mindfulness course, and Laura has the link to that, but we we'll perhaps tell you about that at the end. So um, let's look at this. So think positive. So how can we try and really bring out some of those um, small positive moments? And we're not really talking about, you know, winning the lottery. We're just talking about those small things. Um, for example, today, someone made me a cup of coffee at work and that was so lovely. I just, oh, it was just wonderful to have someone uh, that came in, you know, with a cup of coffee and I hadn't expected it. So can you just think about the past few days and can you just write one thing in the chat that has made you smile or that, you know, you found, you know, really positive, that's really cheered you up? Just one small thing that's happened um, and just write it in the chat. Let's see. Oh, Dragana, a successful class. Oh, that's lovely. Daliborka, your students. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, check out my wife's cooking. Is she a uh, dog, Skeeter, the dogs in Germany? It's lovely. Students willing to work. Students right now. Uh, my fixed laminator. Oh, wow. There you go. Six year old nephew singing a song in English. Oh, isn't that nice? Jokes from the young pupils. Students, Maria, writing your horoscope. Coffee break with a colleague, Barbara. Isn't that lovely? So, again, it's so small positive it's those small moments husband asking for help with technology ah Maria Valeria too that's lovely yeah so again uh, those are the small moments Stefania your son's birthday isn't that lovely so again this is really wonderful so again just making an, a point of thinking about those um, positive um, moments every day and again smile time um, remember, smiling is contagious. It's not just celebrities, but it's you that can light up a room if you enter smiling. And if you'd like to help others and lift the spirits of everyone, just smile. So let's all have a smile. Good. OK, I want to see you smile and you automatically, you know, feel happier. And that's really important, especially after the last um, few years where people have had to wear masks all the time. So we need to sort of, you know, re um, just uh, sort of calibrate our faces if you like and make sure that we are um, smiling because people can see a smile and um, a smile does spur a chemical reaction in the brain um, releasing certain hormones for example dopamine and serotonin and dopamine can increase the feeling of happiness and serotonin a release is associated with reduced stress so there is science behind this as well now smiling does actually require instruction and practice so not everybody has a natural smile um, and it's one of the most important things that we can um, you know um, just communicate um, the idea of um, if, you know getting smiling going and smiling can change our mood um, 
and it's something that young and old um, can develop. OK, so that smiling is important. And uh, oh, there you go, Pietra. Uh, we've got more. Uh, everyone's smiling now. Oh, I've got lots of um, smiles in the in the chat there. This is um, another important aspect here that we do um, need to remember, and it's that thoughts are not facts. OK, so. Mark Twain, managing anticipatory worry. Um, and um, he says that I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. And it's the idea that thoughts are not facts. Um, and this is really important. And it's we call it anticipatory worry. It's bringing tomorrow's worries into today. And that um, can snowball into um, anxiety and stress. So it really is um, all about um, managing anticipatory worry. And then we can look at noticing. So noticing means simply bringing your awareness into the present moment. Noticing can include being aware of emotions or bodily sensations, thoughts in your minds or any other sensory experience like sounds and smells. But developing noticing skills um, can really be about watching our experiences as well with openness and kindness and without judgment. And um, as Yeats says, the world is full of magic things patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. So this is really important. And one thing that you can do to help practice noticing is go for a mindful walk, um, just to sort of reset. Um, and as if you were carrying a torchlight with you, shining a beam, you know, onto particular things. And um, going on your walk, um, you can look out for things that you haven't seen or noticed before. So, for example, a tree or a plant, um, a view, places, shop, windows. And um, in your workplace, um, you can practice noticing your environment, the building you're in, if you're working in a building or working at home, wherever you are, um, the people around you. And then just reflecting on what you see and what you notice about it. So let's try a bit of noticing now. Um, if you've got a window near you um, or somewhere where you can see outside, or if you haven't, if you're inside and there's no window, that's OK. Just notice and just just look around and as if you were shining a torch. This is something you, you haven't noticed. Just see if there's something that you can see um, that you hadn't noticed before. And if you could just write it in the chat. Marina, I love your um, asking your student to pronounce the, and he said he didn't have any teeth. That's lovely. <laughs> that was a smile. It's made me smile as well. So any noticing? I've just noticed um, a light bulb that needs replacing. Any noticing? Oh, there's a spider's web, Jay Chokun. Well, that's really good noticing, isn't it? There you go. And that's made me smile as well. Oh, we've got lots of uh, different things coming through. There you go. OK, so um, good. we've got growth mindset as well. This is very important. Um, and this is also important in language learning as well. So what I'd like you to do now um, in the chat is, can you just tell me which one are you? Are you a glass half full? or a glass half empty. The glass on the screen, is it half full or is it half empty? Oh, we've got a real mix here. We've got some full and we've got some empties. There you go. This is uh, absolutely uh, OK. Yeah. Um, so obviously, it depends on your mindset um, and um, 
there are different types of mindset, as we know. There's the fixed mindset. Let's just look at these. And people with a tendency to believe that intelligence is fixed at birth and they cannot do much about it to, to change it. That's usually people with a fixed mindset. But um, a growth mindset are people with a tendency to believe that their talents, their abilities, intelligence, anything can be developed through hard work and effective strategies. So it's the difference between I can't do it and I'll keep trying. And Carol Dweck has done a lot of research on mindset and, um, and she says that it's not surprising that studies have repeatedly shown that learners with a growth mindset achieve more in school and later on in life. So it's the idea of I can't do this yet. A fixed mindset, you'll think this is just too hard. And a growth mindset, with practice, it will get easier. And so those are all things and attitudes that we need to cultivate um, to begin to, um, to work in a happy environment or to continue working in a happy environment. These are all um, important aspects. And looking now specifically, at mindfulness and language learning. And Giselle says, yeah, it's a cup that needs to be filled. Absolutely, there you go. So <laughs> that's really good. Um, so looking at how mindfulness can help with language learning, and we've got different aspects here. So pause. So mindfulness um, and the attitudes to mindfulness can help um, clear your head and get ready for your get your mind ready for learning so decenter going from one task um, to another so for example if you are learning a language in your workplace or wherever you're learning it you know just stopping and then moving on to um, you know the task at hand and that can be um, really important especially as well if you've got to um, for example write emails or do things in a different language sometimes that can be a lot for the brain um, so breathing deeply, giving yourself a moment to recalibrate, recenter. Remember that recenter, and um, and and that will be easier for you. Mindfulness can also help us with concentration and focus. So your mind may wander. That's quite normal. That's okay. When you're starting to learn languages, you, you get distracted. Lots of things going on. Mindfulness will help you, you know, stay centered, stay focused and focus on the task at hand and giving um, your full attention to learning the new words, to doing whatever you're doing, um, to practicing, to speaking. And also mindfulness can help you not judging yourself for losing concentration or forgetting words that you've just learned. Um, you know, you may get distracted. Your mind may wander, but that's OK. That's normal. And mindfulness can help you. Um, with that compassion as well. Also learning from mistakes, this is important, seeing mistakes um, as an opportunity and achieving a state of non-judgment is all part of a mindfulness, a mindful attitude. And in language learning, that is really important, that confidence um, that learning a language can give you. Uh, and not judging yourself um, for mistakes you make, but um, seeing them all as opportunities to learn. Also, um, we can, um, we've looked at uh, non-judging and setting goals. So focusing on the present, focusing on the moment while we're learning and also setting ourselves ta achievable um, tasks and targets. So not rushing through the lessons to try and get to the next activity, but really just sort of taking your time that you need to be able to um, learn whatever your task or your um, vocabulary or your um, task is for the today and also gratitude so again thinking you know once you've had your you've done your language learning just thinking about that oh I'm so grateful I've learned this today I did this seeing you know thanking your mind for concentrating and uh, for knowing a few more words in the language or in English or whatever language you're learning um, as a result of it so again these are all really um, important things and just looking at how um breaking it down into the um four skills of language learning reading so we can be more mindful when we're reading we can find a good place to read for example um actually finding you know d planning a time for reading um mindfulness can help us with mind wandering as well acknowledging where your mind has gone if you've 
if you start to wander off from the page of what you're reading, that's fine. Just gently seeing where it's gone, noticing, and then bringing it back to focusing on your reading, especially if it's a longer text. And also focus and concentration. So that's important. Writing. Um, we can do journaling as well, writing about how we feel. Very often if you write down, if you're doing a sort of a journal, that can really help you. Um, what you notice and feel, notice the narrative as well. And um, we can approach your writing with curiosity. And also we can be very mindful about thinking before we write emails or text messages. Um, remember just thinking of the consequences. Um, and we saw that yesterday as well. Also with listening, um, mindful listening, listening very carefully, listening to what people are saying and being present in your conversation. So other people feel that you are listening and hearing what they're saying um, and perceive your intention to listen and understand. And mindfulness can help your mind to focus on what is being said. So you will actually you know, understand it better as well and follow it better. So that's important. And also speaking, um, reducing tension, thinking before you speak as well, speech filters, what are the consequences of what I'm going to say? And also that fight, flight or freeze reaction. Yesterday, um, they were talking about um, avoidance as well. And you have that at work, you know, if there's a difficult situation and that's the fight, flight or freeze reaction and mindfulness can help us with that. And we'll look at that in a while. So a writing activity, for example, that you can do, um, which um, can help with self-compassion and kindness. Um, and it's very often, it's easier to be um, kind to other people. It's easier to be complimentary to other people, but it's difficult to be uh, kind and complimentary about ourselves. Um, mindful self-compassion can combine the skills of mindfulness and self-compassion and providing a powerful tool for emotional resilience. So um, just uh, in the chat, and you can actually um, do this after, you know, if you want to sort of just spend more time on it, but in the chat now, uh, just write down one thing that you're good at. Uh, the favorite thing about your job, for example, um, or your happy place and why you like it. I'll give you time to, uh, let's see. Yeah, Vanessa, thank you. These are nice ideas for a journal, absolutely. Reading books every day. Oh, very good, Digit. Creating lessons, organizing things. Gita, oh, I need you to help. That's great. Reading. Antonia, lovely to see you there. Uh, good at a job drawing, happy in an actual park, listening to music, speaking and teaching as a lecturer. Baking cakes, oh wow. Writing poems, listening to others. We got lots of lovely ideas here, lots of lovely things. Watching webinars, Victor, great. Meeting friends, that's lovely. Working with students, Pietra, that is lovely. So we've got lots and lots of um, ideas here. Cooking cakes. Oh, we've got a few cooks here. I think we've got a cook from Italy, a cook um, from Germany. So there you go. Having fun with children, writing a story. Aren't these lovely? They're all making me smile. Really lovely, lovely. Okay, dancing. Oh, wow. There you go. So um, we talked about the fight, flight or freeze. And when we're in a situation um, yesterday, um, it was described as avoidance. So our body increases, our heart rate sharpens, our eyesight and hearing shuts down like most other things. And basically, the fight, flight or freeze was originally designed to help humans manage life threatening situations, for example, like an attack from a saber toothed tiger. And you may find um, the fight, flight or freeze um, before an important decision or a meeting or a speech. So it's just important to be aware of, you know, um, 
what tendency you have? Do you have a tendency to fight? Do you have a tendency to flight, to um, uh, run away or to freeze? So uh, which are you? Are you a fighter, are you a flight or are you a, um, a freeze? There you go, Antonia, fight and freeze. Depends on the situation. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a fighter. Oh, wow. There you go. So lots of different. Um, and, it, and that awareness is really important. And mindfulness can just help you notice that and make um, uh, and um, and make the right decision when when there's a moment. And, and that's very important. So. Sorry, we've got some, I'm just going to go back because we've got some more um, things coming in the chat there. Just uh, just going to fighter and a fighter. Um, Victor says, OK, fight. You used to freeze and now you fight. OK, yeah, and that's it as well. You might find that you've changed as well. So. Um, that's good. There's loads of um, people in the chat writing about how they love cooking as well. So um, that's uh, that's very um, important as well. OK, so um, if you'd like to find out more about there is a Pearson online course that you can take and it's called Mindfulness for All. Um, and it's got video lessons. And you can you're guided through the video lessons um, with, to um, to do the lessons and then um, to do activities to do practices, and there are four modules. Um, and it's called the Pearson Online Mindfulness Course. And these are the um, the topics are coming off automatic pilot, coming back to the body, moving away from striving, and relating. Um, to thoughts and difficulty and there's a, a lesson with a video and activities so Lara's going to put a link um, to that into the chat and what we've looked at today is we've looked at what is mindfulness we've looked at some attitudes to mindfulness and how they can help you and We've looked at growth mindset. And then we've got three practices to take away um, in your pocket. So we've got the um, hugging breath at the beginning. We've got the stop. And we've got the three finger gratitude. And I think we can just do, let's just do one hugging breath, one breath today, because you've all been here. You've all listened very attentively and it's wonderful. You've all been participating. And it's just been so lovely to see you all. So a nice big hug to you all from Korea to California, to Brazil, to Germany, to Italy. Um, lots and lots, absolutely. There you go. Um, and if you've got any uh, problems with, fight, with opening those links or whatever, just contact your Pearson representative. And um, as John Kabat-Zinn says, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. And this is our message today. So that's really, really important. And our webinar today has been brought to us by Mondley Works by Pearson. And if you'd like to find out about Mondley Works, um, you can book a business, uh, you can book a meeting um, by clicking uh, the link and Laura is going to put a link in the chat. Mondly Works is an efficient and fun way to help employees learn new languages. You've got 41 languages available on the app and you can learn from your mother tongue. So it's absolutely wonderful um, experience to learn one of the 40 or one or many of the 41 languages. You're going to be getting a survey. Um, to get your certificate if you need a certificate and um, and if you don't you can complete the survey anyway and that's going in the chat as well so um, Laura's putting that in the chat there you go you'll be able to get the survey 
lots of thank yous there. Um, if you'd like to remind again, if you'd like to find out more about what Mondly Works by Pearson, um, you can book a meeting with a sales representative or request a demo. And there is a link to do that. And there's also a link to where the um, video, um, the presentation is going to be on the Pearson YouTube channel. Yes, Gita, there is a certificate for this webinar. Okay. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and say goodbye to you all. And it's been lovely to see you all. And I hope um, you've enjoyed the webinar. And I hope that you will take one of those practices home. Which practice? Will you be doing the hugging breath? Or will you be doing um, the stop? Or will you be doing the gratitude? Which one? Tell me. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> I will think of your spider's web. Hello, Victor. Thank you. I did cheer the three finger, the gratitude. Yeah. Oh, isn't that lovely? And a big, I'm very grateful as well to Laura today, who's helped set, who actually set this up. And thank you, Vanessa, as well, for all your support.